Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. The parallel supercomputer is used to accelerate the rate of discovery of new compounds, new materials, new physics, new mathematics, and of course, new computer science. The invention of parallel processing opened a doorway to a new world in supercomputing that is called extreme scale computational physics. That new parallel processed pathway leads to the emerging fields of supercomputing the weather for above and below the surface of the earth. Parallel processing is the vital technology that opened new possibilities that were essential to the development of new sciences, new technologies, and new fields of study. Parallel processing made the impossible to solve possible to solve. Parallel processing widened our horizons and changed the way we looked at the computer and the supercomputer. Parallel processing enabled the supercomputer scientists to produce new facts, new mathematics, and, and new physics. The parallel supercomputer brought an enrichment of meanings in the sciences. The parallel supercomputer is the universal enabler of mathematics and science. The first supercomputer that I began programming back on June 20, 1974, was locked away in the bowels of the building at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. The supercomputer is not used for writing letters or doing taxes or planning a vacation. Since 1957, the supercomputer was programmed by an exclusive priesthood who were vast in a language called Fortran. The term Fortran is the acronym for formula translation. I was one of those supercomputer priests that was at home with Fortran. By the late 1970s and early 80s, I was programming the fastest computers in the Foggy Bottom neighborhood of Washington, District of Columbia, and in College Park, Maryland. Back from mid-1977 through mid-1980s, the research laboratories that were active in supercomputing and that were a short bus ride from my residences in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of Washington, D.C. and near the Silver Spring Metro Station include the National Security Agency in Fort Meade, Maryland, U.S. Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C., U.S. Aberdeen Proving Ground in Aberdeen, Maryland, David Taylor Model Basin in Bethesda, Maryland, National Institute of Standards and Technology in Gettysburg, Maryland, and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Back then, 
I was programming the fastest computers and doing so to solve linear systems of equations that arose in extreme scale algebra that in turn arose from my finite difference discretizations of the partial differential equations that I invented and that governed initial boundary value problems of physics and calculus. As a mathematical aside, the differential equation is the most recurring decimal within the grand challenge problems solved in all supercomputers and solved since the first automatic computer was invented in 1946. My discovery of how practical parallel supercomputing can be used to solve grand challenge problems was a breakthrough that was important enough to make the news headlines. That particular discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July 1989 opened the door for the modern supercomputer that is powered by millions of processors that is used to cooperatively solve real-world problems. That discovery made the news headlines because it enabled us to see computers and supercomputers in a different way, namely as parallel processing or solving a million problems at once instead of solving only one problem at a time. What does the world's fastest supercomputer look like inside? The world's fastest supercomputer occupies the space of a soccer field, but yet its crown jewel, called parallel processing, has 200 miles of email cables that remains invincible. Back in the 1970s, only a few computer scientists had seen and programmed the most massively parallel supercomputer in the world. Back in the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built. In 1989, most computer scientists cannot recognize a parallel supercomputer if they see it. I was the first person to recognize that the new global network of identical processors that were equal distances apart, that were on the surface of a sphere in three and higher dimensions, was completely different from any supercomputer any programmer had programmed before. In 1989, I was in the news headlines because I recognize the new technology to be a new computer that is a new internet that could be harnessed to solve grand challenge problems and solve them at light speed and used to parallel process massive calculations across millions of commodity of the shelf processors that I integrated into one seamless cohesive supercomputer. What does a supercomputer look like? The world's fastest supercomputer must occupy the space of a soccer field and do so because it is comprised of 10 million processors that we are packed closely together. The supercomputer that I program is 10 million times faster than your computer and is faster because it is powered by an ensemble of 10 million processors that is solving 10 million problems at once. In high performance computing, the quintessential question is this. What makes a computer super At 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, 
I discovered that parallel processing or solving a million problems at once makes the supercomputer super. It's been said that a mathematical truth is not always synonymous to a physical truth. I discovered that parallel supercomputing is a mathematical truth that is synonymous to a physical truth. In the 1970s and 80s, I was the lone wolf parallel processing programmer and the first supercomputer scientist to recognize that the parallel supercomputer could be harnessed and used to solve extreme scale problems arising in computational physics. I was the first person to figure out how to use the parallel supercomputer to solve real world problems. I am the first programmer of the modern supercomputer that solves grand challenge problems and did so by dividing them into millions of smaller problems and solving them simultaneously or in parallel and solving them with a one-to-one -one problem to processor correspondence and solving them across as many processors. In summary, my signature invention was my discovery that parallel processing is the vital technology that underpins every supercomputer and that helps solve unsolved real-world problems. What makes a computer super? China spent $300 million to build one parallel supercomputer. Japan has a parallel supercomputer on the drawing board that will cost $1.25 billion. A computer that costs a billion dollars is a supercomputer. The parallel supercomputer was not invented in its entirety in only one day. The modern supercomputer began in an Eureka moment, namely my discovery that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. On that date, I discovered that parallel processed time to solutions is 16 orders of magnitude faster than its serial processed counterpart. My discovery inspired the adoption of parallel processing as the standard technology that powers all supercomputers manufactured. But most importantly, a supercomputer isn't super until it is used to forecast the weather for your evening news or used to handcast the weather within the crude oil, injected water, and natural gas that is flowing one mile underneath the surface of a production oil field that is the size of a town. That hindcast or parallel processed petroleum reservoir simulation was simulated at the fastest speeds in supercomputing. Back on the 4th of July, 1989, I was the lone wolf full-time programmer of the most massively parallel supercomputer ever built. And that was parallel processing across a new internet that was a new global network of two raised to power 16 processors that were tightly coupled to each other, that were equal distances apart from each other, that were identical to each other, and that shared nothing between each other. The central processing unit or processor is the brain of the computer and my supercomputer was powered by 65,536 brains or as many processors that each operated its own operating system. 
Why must the research scientist use the supercomputer? The answer is that some of nature's secrets are discoverable only by parallel processing and doing so within the fastest supercomputers. The weather and the climate are intimately related. The climate is the weather averaged over a century. We get the weather, but we expect the climate. The predictive accuracy of climate models increases when the number of processors used to predict the climate increases. The parallel supercomputer is in the hands of the weather forecaster in the United States. The supercomputer is in the hands of the extreme scale petroleum reservoir simulator in the Niger Delta oil fields of the southeastern region of Nigeria that is seeking to discover and recover otherwise elusive crude oil and natural gas that was buried for one million years and buried one mile below the surface of an oil field that is the size of a town. In extreme scale computational medicine, the technology of the massively parallel supercomputer is the bedrock of the technique of massively parallel sequencing that yields high throughput, throughput in DNA sequencing. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because I discovered what makes the world's fastest supercomputer fast. I discovered that parallel processing is the vital technology that puts the super into the supercomputer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm through with Emma again. Insightful and brilliant lecture.